Hello again, or for the very first time, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy, and thank you very much for choosing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. Let's keep on keeping on with the overanalysis of Emerald City Confidential. Hey, are you in charge around here? That depends. Who are you? Now, just like every other character we meet in this game, the Tin Man goes on for a while about stuff and things. And most of it's just lore building. Not too much of it is particularly important to our quest. Other than one, he won't let us go to the area we need to go to because, well, it's an adventure game and things aren't allowed to be that simple. And two, he's the governor of this land. And three, oh, he's an alcoholic. Well, at least he's an oil guzzler, which I assume to a Tin Man it's like being an alcoholic. And four, he's corrupt. Just listen to him. I'm supposed to be in charge, I guess. But ever since the war, I got corrupted just like everybody else. What kind of corruption? Nah, forget I said that. That was the oil talking. Let's talk about something else. Really, Petro? Man just admitted that he's corrupt, and you're like, oh, let's talk about something else. Well, I guess that's what makes you the ace private eye. Oh, well, let's waltz over here to this garage and witness some corruption firsthand. Shaggy, shaggy, shaggy. You wound me. You hurt me deeply. Haven't I always been good to you? Didn't I help you start your business? Yeah, but, uh, um... And have I asked for much in return? Think of where you'd be without me. You were eager for my help when you started, and now you want to refuse me? I didn't have much, um, choice, did I? There's always a choice. You can either pay me what you owe, or you don't. Just be prepared to accept the consequences. Ooh, well that sounded all threatening and vague. I wonder what happens when the frogman talks to the tin man. So, how much did you extort today? Extort? I do not extort. I merely get paid for services owed. You just watch your back, frogman. You just remember who is really in charge here, governor. So yeah, the town of Flo, the town we're in, the frogman runs it. He's like a mafioso demanding payment for services rendered. So obviously we got to do something about that. Because, you know, we Petro, we're going to fix everyone's problems. Why are you so afraid of him? Afraid? Who said I was afraid? You agreed with whatever he said. You're supposed to be in charge. Yeah, well, it's not that simple. I might be in charge, but that guy's in control. So naturally, you're going to have to dig up some dirt on the frogman so we can get the keystone to feed the witch to save the world. Yeah, you know how this is going. Let's make a deal. I get the evidence, and then you tell me where the expedition party went. Are you serious? Do I look like someone who jokes? Huh. <laughs> Why not? Now, if you're confused about the expedition, don't you worry. That's what I'm here for. Basically, the university sent out an expedition that Ansel and all those other guys were on to find the Keystone. And we're going to follow in their footsteps because we're pretty sure they found the Keystone. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk to the sawhorse and go off to the frogman's villa. You're really made of wood. Do you mind? It's kind of a sensitive subject. Sorry. So this all may seem a bit confusing, and that may be due in part to my editing, but also because there's a lot of information to digest here. Let's see if I can summarize what's going on in the town of Flo. There's a frog. He's running a protection racket. We need to find some evidence on it so we can find where an expedition went because we think the expedition discovered the keystone, which we need to find to free the witches. And the person who knows where the expedition went is the governor, who's an oilholic, and also allowing this corruption to happen because he's a broken man for reasons we don't quite know yet. All right, all right. The game's taking a hard north turn, and let's check out this swanky villa that apparently a frog owns. Hello? Hello. My name is Petra. I'm here to see the frogman. What is this regarding? So that's the frogman's secretary, I guess? I'm not entirely sure what she is. The co-owner of his mafia organization, which just seems to be her and the frog, so it's not really that big of an organization. But nevertheless, this lady right here apparently has some history with the Tin Man. They used to be lovers or something. I'm not really sure, but the game implies as much. But nevertheless, the first go-round with the frog man, there's not a whole lot to 
do. You just kind of chat him up for a while, and then he tells you he needs to pick up some magical artifacts from the city, and, well, we're going to do it to prove that we're loyal to him or something like that. It's not terribly difficult. All we need to do is go back to Scraps, and she has a magical item on layaway for him. Thanks, Scraps. Anytime, neighbor. So, what's so magic about this paintbrush? Oh, it's horrible. Or do I mean wonderful? By the way, it lets you paint whatever you think about. Well, that does sound like it could be horrible or wonderful. It also sounds like there could be a thousand and one uses for it, but oh wait, there's only one use for it in this entire game. And we haven't gotten to that point yet, because we need to find some evidence on the Frogman. So that entails talking to all the business owners and trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with their lives, and we fix it, and then yada yada yada, the evidence is revealed to us. So we talk to Shaggy, who we find out has some sort of speech impediment, and also that he's in love with the girl who owns a diner across the street from him. So naturally, we need to hook these two up in order to solve their problems and to get the necessary evidence to put the frogman away. You're in love with Miss Cake, aren't you? No, I'm, um, no. Hey, why would you, why would you think that? I'm a detective. I know these things. And I'm not blind. You won't, um, you, you won't tell her, will you? Don't worry. Your secret is safe. All right, so let's cut to the chase here, folks. All we gotta do is we gotta cure Scrappy of his little speech impediment by using some magic on him. That way, he'll have the courage to go over and talk to the girl across the street and confess his undying love for her. I think you have a shot at Miss Cake now. Don't be silly. Miss Cake is the moon and stars. And my speech is the dark clouds that block them from my sight. If only I could banish those clouds, make them as clear and temperate as a mountain lake. Aw, oh, he's fixed now. How lovely. And he also reveals why the Frogman's blackmailing him. Tell me about the Frogman. Oh, who cares about the Frogman? He can keep that worthless spell. Spell? The Woodsia spell. Woodsia? Yes, see? Woodsia! Well, okay, we now know what's going on. Turns out the Frogman's giving these people magic spells so their businesses can succeed, and then when their businesses succeed, he's coming in and asking for a higher and higher percentage of the profits. A pretty good racket, now that I think about it. But hey, we're here for the love story, right? Let's go see this lover boy chat up the lady at the diner. Table for one? One is such a cold and lonely number. I cast it away. It shall never be uttered in my presence. Uh, I'm sorry? Is there anything I can help you with? Only the rest of my life? Yeah, he's coming on a bit strong. As I said, I could not contain myself. You've been coming in here for months and you barely say a word to me. You don't know me. You don't know anything about me. But I do. I know I am incomplete without you. I am nothing if I... Stop it. Just stop it. I think you should leave. But dearest, why? I've just bared my soul to you. You march in here with your fancy words and you think you can just... What? Sweep me off my feet? Change my life? I've had enough of that foolishness back in Munchkin country. I don't need it here. Get out of here, Shaggy, and don't come back. But... Go! Wow, that's actually kind of refreshing that she didn't buy into his fancy words. So naturally, we gotta change Shaggy back, and then he goes back and apologizes for speaking all fancy. I kind of feel like there was probably a middle ground that could have been reached here, but hey, whatever. If you got a disability, just roll with it, kids. You're better off with it than without, I guess is the message. It was, uh, it was stupid, and, um, I'm sorry. Stupid is right, but I suppose it was sweet in its way. You're not, um, mad? No. Maybe it's the mountains. I just can't stay mad when I'm near the mountains. You, uh, like the mountains? Of course. It's beautiful up there. H have you ever seen them from above? You know, um, in a gump? In a gump? No, I haven't. Ah, but all's well that ends well. These two are gonna inevitably hook up. 
God, I wonder what the age difference is. Oh, well. The diner lady eventually reveals to us that, yes, the frogman gave her some magic so all of her plants could grow so she can operate her diner. So with all that evidence locked away in our little brain, we can go back to the frogman and try to break into his vault and find more important documents. Oh, but first we gotta tell the mafioso secretary lady that the Tin Man doesn't want to get back together with her because, you know, he's a governor and she's like a mafioso now, so it's kind of a conflict of interest. And all that's symbolized by him refusing to take back her locket that she gave to him or something like that. Who knows? We hardly know these characters. Why are we so invested in their lives? He said for you to stick it where the sun don't shine. He really said that? Yeah. He... he must hate me. He's not wishing you any goodwill, that's for sure. I... Nimi and me seems to be the type who doesn't express her emotions often. But right now, she's struggling to keep a lid on them. Well, thank you for that exposition to make up for the lack of animation on this character. So anyway, we go inside now, and oh no, her and the frogmen are feuding. Disturb you from what? Staring out the window, counting your money? What's got into you, Nimi? Nothing. Everything's just dandy. What got into her? I have no idea. Well, anyway, they fight so much that he leaves the room. And now we have access to everything in this room, completely unobserved, because he's a terrible mobster. But yeah, we use a magic brush on the portrait. And oh my god, that's the only time we can ever use this very interesting sounding magical item. And that's to get inside this damn portrait to get the documents that pretty much record all the Frogman's illegal doings. Yay us. Ha <laughs> ha! I've hit the jackpot! Names, dates, account numbers, these files have it all. Well, that was relatively easy. So as you would expect, we go back to the governor and hand over all the information to him because there's no police force in this town. I have something I think you want. Oh, really? A folder of documents straight from the Frogman's files. You're pulling my leg. No, really. Take a look at this. Okay. Just give me a few minutes to look these over. You weren't kidding. Damn, that was a quick fade out. And no, that wasn't clever editing at my end. This is just the evidence I've been looking for. It lists names, businesses, financial transactions. No lawyer in all of Oz can defend against this. We've got him. Couldn't happen to a more deserving guy. You've done a good thing here today. Winky Country will be a much better place with the Frogman locked up. Glad to hear it. So the governor lives up to his end of the bargain and tells us where the expedition went. And lo and behold, the keystone's there. Ha! Free at last! What's this? A waterfall? It figures I'd come back near water. That's the witch! You brought back the wicked witch! Boo! Ah! Ha! That felt good. You, girl, you brought me back. Yes, and the name is Petra. Petra, it's an honor. It is? For you, yes. She's already getting on my nerves. Probably because she's hardly been in the game for 30 seconds and she's already more interesting than you. No, it's time for you to die. Oh, for Lurline's sake. Yeah, the frogman's here and he never drops his martini. My god, his liver must be... Do frogs... Frogs have to have livers. Do they? They're amphibians. Do amphibians have... Nevertheless, we gotta fight him now. If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. I am not without defenses of my own. Behold! The wand of Ivaldo. Smuggled to me from the distant kingdom of Ev. This wand belonged to the cruel king of Ev. With this wand, he terrorized the land. Now, I shall terrorize you! <sighs> Why don't we just have a gun and shoot him? A child's toy! Impudent witch! What a crazy action sequence. All we need to do is get the horse to where the frogman is, and well, the horse kind of kills him. I'm gonna regret this! Huh? (laughs) 
Good riddance. Was that stupid man really in charge? No. The real leader is Nick Chopper, the Tin Man. Yes, I'm familiar with him. Oh well. Perhaps one day I'll challenge his rule, but not today. Oz is in danger. I'd best met a danger. Enemies are readying to attack us. Ruling Winky Country will mean nothing if all of Oz is destroyed. Ooh, how intriguing. Ooh, how intriguing. Well, that does it for this episode of Emerald City Confidential. And in Dave Gilbert's own words, I used to write so much unnecessary dialogue. Yeah, truer words have never been spoken, but at least he's aware of it. And I'm pretty aware that I can probably finish this thing off in a couple of episodes. So hopefully I'll see you for those episodes, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I've been some guy. Have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. And yeah, this outro is going on for a while. All right, bye-bye.